story to tell. The more armor of the tank is strengthened, the more anti-tank ammunition changes to penetrate the armor. As the tank structure develops, anti-tank ammunition chases it. And that is the image of tanks being fired by anti-tank missiles in Ukraine today, including the most modern tanks. September 15, 1916 marked a major turning point in the history of World War I and in the history of war. Armored vehicles first appear in the Battle of the Somme in northern France. In the tanks in the Great War, historian Dr. Paul Molmasari, former Lieutenant Colonel Commander of the Tank Regiment, noted that the concept of armored vehicles appeared from a long time ago. In the 4th century BC, the Greek Polyidus built a type of large tower called a helipolis, a type of siege tower. The siege tower had nine ironclad floors, 40 meters high, 21 meters wide, weighs 180 tons, moves on wheels, carried 200 troops close to the wall to attack. The Romans then used siege towers equipped with shields fitted with catapults. By the Middle Ages, the Czechs and Poles had turned peasant chariots into chariot fortresses. In the 15th century, genius Leonardo da Vinci in Italy once sketched a conical armored fighting vehicle that moved by a gear system, connected to four wheels controlled by eight people. After the inventions of the internal combustion engine and the tract were born at the beginning of the 20th century, the first prototypes of the tracked armored fighting vehicle appeared. On February 20, 1915, the British Royal Navy established the Amphibious Warfare Committee with the policy of converting agricultural tractors into armored fighting vehicles. In the end this project had to be stopped because the crawler was too bulky and the large wheel was too weak. The project then focused on smaller prototypes. At the end of 1915, Britain tested the Little Willie armored vehicle, the first prototype of the later Mark I tank. Early the following year, the War Office ordered 150 vehicles. With the intention of launching a large-scale attack using a large number of armored vehicles so that the Germans could not react, the British kept the production process absolutely secret, so they called armored vehicles as tanks. This made German spies think that Britain was producing water tanks for the army. On September 15, 1916, the British Mark I armored vehicle first entered the battle in the Anglo-French coalition battle against the Germans at Flares Corselat. The French newspaper Le Matin, published the next day, described, it was dawn, and the Germans were in a big surprise. Massive steel monsters charged between the coalition armies. This is a new armored car built by the UK in absolute secrecy and just now being revealed. The British Mark I tank was oblong, weighing 30 tons, 8 meters long, 4 meters wide, maneuvered by a track system. The vehicle did not have a turret, only covered with a layer of wire mesh that is supposed to protect from grenades. Crew of 8 people including 1 commander, 1 driver, 4 gunners, and 2 people in charge of the track. The Battle of Flares Corselet in September 1916 lasted a week, ultimately failing to break the German line. The British Mark I tank was rated as a very disappointing combat. The vehicle could not overcome rough, muddy terrain, trenches, rivers and streams, mainly because the contact surface between the track and the ground was not enough. The tank moved no faster than soldiers on foot, about 5 km per hour, and only traveled 40 km. The track was so weak that it had to be changed every 80 km. In the book World War I 1914-1918, two professors Robin Pryor and Trevor Wilson noted that Britain prepared 49 tanks but only 32 were capable of combat. When the battle at Flares Corselet began, seven vehicles failed to start, most of the remaining 25 had mechanical problems or failed to navigate the rough terrain. Only nine tanks penetrated the German lines and were so damaged that they could no longer fight. The tank could not make a breakthrough on the battlefield because the production process was kept secret. Along with that was the skepticism of most infantry commanders. Soldiers were not trained to fight with tanks. In addition, the tanks were too scattered and the tactics of fighting with the new armored vehicles did not make a breakthrough. After all, tanks had a primarily psychological effect.
a year after the Battle of Cambrai in northern France from November 20 to December 7, 1917, helped Britain and France analyze more deeply about tanks. The terrain of Cambrai was wider and flatter. The main thrust consisted of 476 tanks, followed by six British divisions. This was the first time tanks were used on a large scale in war. To deal with the wide and deep German anti-tank trenches, the British assembled their tanks in groups of three, each carrying a large bundle of trees. The first tank threw the bunch of trees into the trench for the next two tanks to pass. Finally the tanks broke through the German lines. The Mark IV tank version operating from June 1917 has thicker armor, resistant to German anti-tank bullets. The final skirmishes of the First World War confirmed the effectiveness of the tank. The battle at Amiens, France, on August 8, 1918, became the largest tank battle of the First World War. British new tank Mark V played the main role. By the end of the war in November 1918, Britain had produced 2,542 tanks while France had produced 4,146 tanks. The US used 267 French-made tanks in its first major campaign at the Battle of saint Miel in September 1918. Germany did not believe in tank efficiency, so at the end of the war only 20 A7V tanks were produced. After the defeat in 1918, Germany began to build many formidable armored divisions. The age of tanks came during the Second World War.